Welcome to the Tippy Toe Podcast. We got a special guest tonight, but before she says she is, you already know, this has been brought to you by Gold Money Grill. Put your money by your mouth there. Glee! Get your little six on six, eight on eight, ten on ten. They're going to get you right. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Who is my guest for the night? It's your girl, Jasmine Kadavid. If you're not already following me, please do, at Jasmine Kadavid. How you doing, Jasmine? I'm good. Right, then you're looking good tonight. Thank you. For the people that don't know, where is Jasmine from? I'm from the crib. I'm from Miami. Born and raised. My dad is half Colombian. My mom is half, uh, I mean, my dad's Colombian. My mom's Guatemalan. Okay, okay. How did, did you go to school down here? Mm-hmm. Hi, what school did you go to if you don't mind me asking? I went to a couple different schools. Uh, shit, in middle school, I was in and out. Law and Childs, Jam Man. Uh, high school, I went to Lanier James. It's an opportunity school in Broward. I went to American. And I went to Western. And when you was in school, what you, did you play any sports, cheerleader, or anything like mm-hmm. that? I played all the sports. I was all most the sports? Valuable, yeah, I was most valuable athlete in the in the yearbook in middle school. In high school, I was already like in and out of trouble, so I didn't finish and graduate. But um, my main sports, I played a lot of soccer. I ran for many years. I did cross country, track. Um, yeah, how you so focused in sport and still got caught up in the streets? What happened? Well, I was. I started off really good, you know, like most of us. You know, I was a gifted student. I was. Um, into my sports and then like around sixth grade like I don't know I guess shit just started fucking off I, you know um growing up growing up and then st- things started to take a toll on you and so like about 11 like the shit really affected me I was old? like yeah I started you, getting you like you said like you was grown at 11 already I was definitely grown at 11 I, I caught my first charge at 11 you caught your first you were gangster I was bad what I you was did? bad going I was bad and I didn't give a fuck. What you did? I'm um, nosy. What would my you? first charge, my first charge. Yo, first so is more right, charges. It goes like this. So it's the, these two girls, right? That I, they was my best friends. They did me dirty. They hurt my feelings. They turned their back on me. And after that, I beat one of the girls up. And then I made me some new friends. And I made a gang of us called the Diamond Girls. You made a game. <laughs> so I was like, this, look, this is our clique. We the Diamond Girls. And I, I, I was suspended from school, I think, for like fighting or something. And then I came back on, on, I was suspended, but I went to the school and I told them to tag the school up with me. And we did. And they, that was my first charge, graffiti. At 11. At 11. I didn't even know that you can arrest, arrest 11, 11 year old. Girl, who taught you how to draw? I don't even I don't I don't know what we was drawing. I was probably just writing my name or some like, shit with like diamonds. That what I'm. I, it, it was a joke. I know. I'm trying right. To I was like diamond girl. Yeah, yeah. We gotta go. We got. I don't know why how they followed me to to do that. Yeah, we gonna go tag up the school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was, you said that was your first time getting in trouble. First time. And so it was the second time. And you already had your gang. You made history. You had your own gang already. Ain't hey, laying with your zone. Right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> We had the little clique, the Diamond Girls. I don't know. I just kept getting into trouble. I just kept fighting all the time. I was angry. Maybe I had, like, short girl syndrome. I don't know. I was angry a lot. I started fighting a lot. Um, You know, I started fucking around with drugs early at a young age and uh, experimenting. So I just... Talking to Michael over? Shit, shit just got me in a lot of trouble. Oh, you started smoking weed early, basically? Yeah. I, I started just at a young age. I just started to not care. So I was, like, fighting and, you know trying different stuff, not going to school. So what age did you stop fucking with school? I, I went to school all the way through. I would say I, I did a, a six month bid at 15. Six month? Yeah, that was the, the last one. Juvie. Yes. Gangsta over here. When I got out, I, did, I didn't want to be in trouble no more. I didn't want to like do drugs. I wanted to do the right thing. What I happened wanted, in there that made you ain't want to get in trouble no I more? I got tired of being in there. like. It was not the first program. It was not the second. Like I just kept going in and out, and I was missing, you know. And then when you when you be sober for a while and you actually doing the right thing, you start something clicking you, and you're like, I don't want to. I don't want to do drugs. Like I want to be, I want to be sober. I want to do the right things. Like I want to go back to my sports. You know, I want to run and stuff. So the last one that I did, I I wanted to do the right thing, and I didn't want to. I didn't even want to be around people that smoked weed. Like, I just wanted to do the right thing. So I went back. Um, to school was doing the right thing. What grade that was when you went back to doing the right thing? When 11th grade. Okay, 11th grade. Okay. 11th grade. And then I graduated from school. I was already working. 
I had a job. I had the OJT. You remember OJT in school? No. You don't know what that is? Did no, you no. finish school? No, I ain't going to lie. I got kicked out of 10th grade. Okay. I was so mad. OJT started in 11th grade. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I was already working outside, and, you know, I was just trying. I was living on my own since I was 14. So, at this point, I'm just like, okay, you know, I got to work. Like, I, you know, I want to go to prom and stuff. And then, it, you know, I, I almost didn't graduate because I was tired all the time. But I did night school. I did everything I had to do when I graduated. So did you end up going to prom? I did. Who did you go to prom with? You know I'm nosy now. You remember his name or you don't remember? Nah, I took a girl. Oh, <laughs> that was going to be my next question because you sound like you was a little town boy too. I took a girl. She was cool. Yeah, we had, a good, we had fun. So who, 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 like, so, so you was dating a girl basically? Mm-mm. That was just your little friend friend. We wasn't dating. You you was lurking. Actually, you there lurking. was a girl that I wanted to take. She tried me for a dude. But nah, I'm just playing. The girl that I went with, that was my home girl. Mm-hmm. So was what made you girl. take a girl to the prom? That's some different shit. Especially that ain't your girlfriend? I think because like, I, was, I just wasn't on that. Like I, I just wanted to go to prom. I wasn't like, oh, who's going to take me? Who am I going to go with? Like. You know, I was working already. Like, I wasn't doing what high school kids was doing. So I'm just like, I want to go to prom. And I took my homegirl. So when you say 11th grade, so when you graduated, well, did you just switch the people you was hanging around to stay focused? Mm, I didn't even hang around with kids at school. Mm-hmm. So, like, when I was at school finishing, I was just in and out, going to school to do what I had to do. Okay, okay. And that's probably why I took my homegirl, because I wasn't really in the school, you know, the cliques like that at school. Okay, 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 okay. So, uh, growing up, who did you listen to, though? I listened to everything. So, my my first my first experience with a father was my stepdad, right? I thought he was my real dad. He was a drummer in a band. So, that's how I really got introduced to music was through him. He used to have band practice twice a week. And then, um, so with him, I listened to all types of th- Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Aretha Franklin. But then... You know, normal music, I was a big Tupac, big 3-6, Alicia Keys. Um, you know, I've always been real deep into the R&B, too. I even listened to a little bit of rock, Nirvana, you know, um, Slipknot, Disturbed. Like, I, I had a whole, like, different variety of music. But growing up, definitely, I was listening to Tupac over Biggie. Okay, oh, so you're a Tupac fan. For sure. Okay, okay. So when did you... Thought you know dabbing with it, you know it's probably freestyling, you know, you know playing around with the music. If you don't mind me asking, um, I I used to sing at church. I used to sing at church. So you was a church girl too. Something like you was that. A gangster church. <laughs> you was just everything, huh? I was in church. I used to sing at church, and um, I sang at school. I was in chorus. I was in show choir, and then like I would say two thousand. 17 2016 i met wanye morris from boys to men um okay i got a cbd company 2015 my boyfriend got killed out here i left to las vegas and i started a rolling paper company jazzy rolling papers check them out at jazzy rolling papers you, you, you ain't bring them of course i brought a whole pack you gotta leave them motherfucker. i brought it so it could stay here Hold okay on. then you feel me we i don't miss a beat mm-hmm. okay then so you started your own how, how you got how you did that so everybody knew me to be like messing with the with the cannabis out here. So when Wiz came out and he was, you know, the first uh, person in the hip hop industry to come out with the strand, people was messaging me like, "Yo, you should come out with your own strand. You should come out with your own strand," because people know me to knew me to be like in that world. So I um I had linked up with some people at a cannabis show, I because I used to get booked a lot you know to to show up in these places so i linked up with some people they presented an opportunity to me and i kind of just rode with it and it was like when i was at that transition of me you know wanting to start fresh leave and everything so i started the rolling paper company i brought out the first pink fda approved paper the glue for all the papers is non-cancerous um and all the papers they're 100 percent organic and hemp and I, I chose these papers and I specifically went out the country and, and tried everything myself because I've smoked every paper, Grabba, Backwood, Dutch, every type of paper. And the thicker the paper that you smoke, like it starts to have an effect on you, the nicotine, you know, in your throat, if you go to record, if you go to sing. So that's really why I wanted to get like a healthy type of paper, you know, that didn't hit so hard when I'm smoking because I've been smoking for a long time. 
Mm-hmm. But that, that, but who in the family was you know on that grind like that? That just made you jump out there because that's not no regular thing. Jump out there, rolling paper, good business to get into. Well, my grandma, my grandma, she brought my family on my mom's side. She brought my family from Guatemala. She left when she was like nineteen, and she had two daughters, my mom and my one of my aunts. Um, she left them. She came over here, no education, and in Guatemala, like they make you stop going to school at like in, no. in like middle school or like fifth grade because you got to go work. You know, it's a different type of Environment. country. Mm-hmm. So, um, she, you know, she didn't have a high school diploma or anything. So she came to the country, five hundred dollars. They robbed her the first day she got here. She um, she got her GED. She cleaned houses and she went to college and she became a respiratory therapist. My grandma to this day, she still runs five, six miles and not stopping. So I, I would say I get a lot of like she inspired me a lot. My grandma said like she a bona fide hustler, like, you know, and she's got a kind heart. She just keep on going, keep on going. And she she would even work day shift and night shift. So it was hard when you <coughs> see her, because when you do see her, she'd be having to sleep. Damn. So she motivated me a lot to be like, nah, you got to get up and go get it. Like, if, if you awake, come on, let's go. It's a thousand things you could be doing right now. Like, don't waste time. Man, shout out to Grandma, man. Hell yeah, shout out to Grandma. And another thing you said, though, you say what brought you this, too, you was getting booked to go different places. How did that start? How did you get end up getting booked? That's not regular either, now. Yo, so, you know how you said, like, yeah, I was like, tomboy, That that's how I was. I was always one of the bros, you know, I... And I, I didn't always look like this. When I was in all that trouble, I, I know the people that knew me back then, um, well, all the people that still know me now, it's different, but people that see me back then, they won't recognize me now, you know, because I was just, I was, you know, I look different. So I did a photo shoot randomly, and um, the photo shoot kind of just like took off. And what, what kind of photo shoot this was? It was just a, a regular photo shoot. I did a photo shoot with a photographer that wanted to link with me, and it should just it li- it just took off. What, so what then you I, had on though? Put uh, us in the make us. I would say uh, I, I had a bathing suit. It was probably like a beach photo shoot. Oh, so you made him go viral? Yeah, it was like a little beach photo shoot, and this was like when Instagram. I don't even think Instagram had like it was just social media. All that was just starting. So I did a video with Vado. And um, that video was big. That video kind of blew up. And that, the photo shoot and the video, like, everybody just started calling me, booking me, be places. I never wanted to be a mo- model. I never thought I was going to be a model. I always knew that I was an entertainer. Hold on now. You kind of rushed it. So you booked that. So your first call, ex- break that down to your first call. I'm trying to book you. Let us know how it went. For the, you know, I can't even tell you how it went exactly. I'm pretty it. sure it went through an email or through the photographer. Mm-hmm. The photographer or... And they call you. You know, and then people started coming to me like they wanted to manage me, you know, so I, I kept working with different people, you know, I create different emails and stuff. And, um, yeah, from there, it kind of just took... Out. And another thing, too. For I'm me, I'm just like... There's money involved? Let's go. Like, what do I got to do? I got to be pretty? I got to come with hair and makeup? Come on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Let's Even though you're time, boy, ain't nothing for you to get hair make it happen real quick. Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. Another thing, I was checking the Instagram. You got a million followers. How you make that happen? Let us know, girl. I'm trying to get up there. I would say um, definitely times are different from when social media first started because when social media first started, I already had the name and I was already like hype at that time. So I would say that me being in there from the beginning helped me with my foot in the door. And I would also say, like, once that algorithm shit came in, it changed a lot of things for people. I was uh, pregnant. I know I got a two-year-old daughter. And I was pregnant when all that shit started changing. And you could totally see, like, it's a difference. Like, they have a thing now, like, if, if you don't like somebody's picture, then you won't see them come up at the top of your feed. No. So it's kind of like you got to kind of manipulate the system. And uh, that goes for anything, social media, any type of business you get into, you have to learn it and learn how to be able to manipulate it and leverage off of it. So I noticed with social media, I knew what I started to see a pattern of what people wanted to see. Another thing I did was I tap into other people. I work with several different people. And every time you work with somebody and y'all tag each other, you tapping into each other's fan bases. Mm-hmm. So I was constantly like, well, I'm, I'm work with these people. I work here. Networking, be there. Basically. Right. And um, being in different places and working with different people, 
it just got me seen a lot of different places. And I, I want you to, you know, talk to the ladies real quick, like, cause I talk, to, I do a lot of business with females, and they be saying, like, I guess when they meet up with guys, guys don't know how to focus on the business without trying to holler. Do you go through that being, you know? I mean as fuck. <laughs> I mean as fuck. Like, I'm cool. And everybody knows I'm really cool. Like, I have a really cool, down-to-earth personality. But when it comes to business, I am very mean. And uh, it's not that I'm mean. I'm just assertive. And that's another thing I, I, I got to explain to people a lot. Being assertive is not an attitude. You have to know what you're here for, what do I want, and this is what we're doing. And you have to make it very clear. Because, yeah, if you a good-looking woman, you know, like, a, a lot of times it don't even be that. Sometimes, you know, men, they just... You know, they they, they want to test the water, see how far they could go. So you got to be real strict about what you're doing. And I, I lecture a lot of young girls coming into the game and be like, if you booked for <clears throat> a shoot, when you show up there, what's the task at hand? It's not partying. Mm -hmm. So when you get there, do what you're supposed to do. And you could drink and party afterwards, but don't do it while you're supposed to be working because you get drunk while you're on set and you get, right, you get sucked in and then now you think it's a party. You want to hang out after that's not how it's supposed to go. And that's how you, one, lose your respect, and two, lose focus of what you're supposed to be doing. Facts, facts, facts. Y'all hear that, ladies, now. So you feel me? Get drink after. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so like, and don't be afraid to say no. Like, sometimes, like I said, like, people, they're just going to test the water to see, like, how far they can, you know, like, well, let me see. Like, maybe she'll give me play because it is a lot of women out here that's easy, you know, that they're not there for the work, you know, so... You kind of just, you know, got to put your foot down and be assertive. Say what you came here for. Like, don't be shy. Mm -hmm. So so you, do you dib and dab with the R&B, too? Because you still say you used to sing at the church. Well, I started off as a singer. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I recently started letting my fans know that I rap. Um, only people that knew that I rap was, like, my, my friends. Like, if we out drunk, I go to rap and shit. Ah, freestyle in Spanish. Are you but, freestyle in Spanish? No, I can't. I, about to say, <laughs> boy, you, I thought you was a snapper. I said, you going in. Hey, um, but I just started letting people know that, yes, I do rap. Started putting that type of music out. But really, I'm an R&B singer first. Mm -hmm. so, but right now, you're putting straight rap right now out there. Um, not just straight rap, but like I've been putting out a lot more rap records. Well, where explain I'm what kind of content. Yeah, what kind of content. So, you like, so, you know, so since I came into the game with Wanye, like, I'm following his lead. I'm thinking, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be Ariana Grande. Like, this is okay. We're going to do pop. Like, I'm trying to be clean cut. I'm going to be mm -hmm. different. But, you know, I really wasn't being true to myself. My bad. I'm over here. I keep lighting this shit. I haven't even hit it. No, nah, you good. I'm just trying to hit mine. <laughs> <laughs> but my bad. Yeah, what you saying? You thought you going to do little pop stuff? Right. So I wasn't really being, like, true to myself. I was doing a lot of things trying to be mainstream. I, I, I didn't want to. I was like, no, I don't want to be like that. But... Um, oh, you trying to go straight mainstream? Yeah, I thought that I was going to do more like Ariana Grande. I thought that, like, well, let me package myself like this so I could be different. But me being like that, I ultimately wasn't being true to myself. You know, I'm not saying shit that I would be saying to my friends. So after my sister's past last year, it kind of, like, gave me a fire that, like, I was like, I don't care no more because my sisters would always beg me, drop that shit, drop that shit. This is my favorite song. And I, I was, you know, like, well, I don't know. It ain't mastered. You know, I was second guessing. Well, does the, is the people going to like it? Da, da, da. What song that was you had? So uh, one of them was um, If You Let Me. And I dropped that song in March this year. But before they passed, you know, they were begging me for that one specifically. And I was like, well, it ain't mastered. I don't know. Maybe I got to do some niches. But when, when I went through that tragedy with the family, like, going through shit like that, it does change you. And it, you get a fire. You turn angry all over again. If you was angry before, that shit come back. And um, I, had that, I had that fire. I still got the fire in me. And I'm not as angry as I was when it happened. But in the beginning, I was just like, man, I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. Like, I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm supposed to be packaged like, oh, no, because you got to be like this. And you got to put this on your Instagram. And you can't take pictures like that, man. I don't give a fuck what none of y'all talking about. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to release the music I want to release however I want to release it. I don't give a fuck if it's only five people listening. I'm going to do whatever I want because that's what I want to do. So that's kind of what, like, pushed me to be like, I'm, I'm going to do the music I want. I'm oh, yeah, going to release what they I had, want. They were trying to switch your style up? Hell yeah. Hell is that yeah. is that like a female thing? Because like, 
Like it's like the guys want. I don't know. It's like the females that always got somebody writing their lyrics. It's not too much females writing. You like to write your own shit, or you like to get help? I definitely write my own shit, but I would definitely I'll get help too. Like I don't have. I love co-writing because it helps you like reach limits that you don't reach by yourself. Yeah. You you tap into different yes, ideas fine, that yes, you won't fine. think about. Facts, facts, you know fine. what I'm saying? Different cadences, like you know. So I I love co-writing. So um, you did any co-writing yet? Oh, you for sure. Okay, for okay, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I co-write. I write by myself, but most of the time, like, everything is my own stories, and I already know what I want to talk about, or I already have it written. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe we'll tweak, bounce some ideas off of each other. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So when you're in the studio, what you need to get your vibe started, to get, you know, get you in your vibe to drop them hits. Yo, truthfully, I don't drink and I don't smoke when I when I got to go record and when I'm in the studio. I like to have a clear mind, and if anything, I'll run a mile before I go that day. You're going to run a mile? Hell yeah. You about to get hot so you can drop that heat. Period. Okay then. Listen. I'm feeling it. I'm okay feeling then. it. I'm feeling it. Okay then. Okay then. We're gonna turn up. Um nah, I like to run him out. I don't know if you know, but Bob Marley, he always um played a game of soccer before he had uh performances. Oh and, I did not know uh, that. The reason is because like if you are a runner, if you know anything about that, when you run that long distance you get a runner's high but not only that i could just run a mile and it warms up all my vocal cords so i hit that mic and everything just sound crispy and perfect like i'm already warm i ain't gotta warm up and sing a bunch for me to get in pocket so i I feel like running always helps me before i gotta record or perform and you mentioned you know running so your voice could just sound real good let Mm -hmm. the people know how important it is to give a perfect performance i'm watching a lot of artists it's like they don't care about performing no more like it's like get on stage do whatever and get off. It's hard. It's hard. Like, I'll keep that shit on it. Like, it's hard. Especially if you singing because, like, you don't you don't just come up there. Like, it, you're, not, you're not going to the booth with your engineer. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you, you, you got all your little plugins. It don't work like that. And not only that, the pressure is on. Like, the pressure is applied. Everybody's watching you. Like, they listening to every little thing. So, it's hard. And you should... Uh, practice your craft before you go out there and do it you should invest into a mic at home you know with a little speaker so you get some practice before you go out there oh so you believe in rehearsing before you got there hell yeah hell yeah Mm -hmm. um and any artist will know like you get up there you start getting hot real quick it's hot in here shit but it's just you know that that pressure is applied so if you want to be good at something you know you got to practice it and i think a lot of people they take advantage of the opportunities that they're given. You know, like I, I know athletes and I know people who's in like big positions that a lot of people would kill to be in and they just really take it for granted. They out there drinking, doing coke, doing all this different stuff every day and it's like, yo, you really not invested into what you're doing. Like it just seems to me like you don't really love it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm seeing that too because I deal with a lot. It's like, man, you got to take it seriously. Like they get the chance, but they... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But damn though, so um, so what heat though? You when you start, you know, working on your craft, that you like, oh shit, I could do this shit right here. What was what was that first song that made you feel like that? Shit, um, I don't know. I always felt like I could do it. Like I don't think it was a song. Like I just always knew that. Okay, knowing you got all this fan base, like what message now? Okay, th- like, do you listen to your fan base? They, they tell you, oh, this song right here jamming, or you go with your song. How you how you how you pick a song? Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I always have something that I like, but you know how it goes. Like you might like some shit, but then everybody else would like something different. So I had a, a, a album listening session like two weeks ago, and um. The one song, it was two songs. So it was one song I was like, oh, I gave a speech before every song. And I'm like, I probably ain't going to put this one out because I didn't like how I sounded when I recorded it. And that one song, everybody was like, yo, that shit's so hard because the dynamics of it and the way you sound it, like it made it different. And I'm like, really? Like this is the one that I didn't want to fuck with and everybody liked. Um, I think Juice World, he said the same thing. He was like, this is the song I hated, but that was the one that took off. So... I think it is important to listen to your fans because the people might hear something that you don't hear. Mm-hmm. And knowing, like, you feel me, from how you look and the, you feel me, how much followers, how that DM be looking, goddammit? 
Shit. It go down in the DM. It go I'm down. single. It I wish down. it was a little more wet, not so dry. It's, it's, be, no, it's not dry. I mean that shit like. Hmm. You know that thing be looking spammy. I, it listen, be looking spammy. If if um if you want to try, man, try your luck, cause I really do be answering people in there. Like mm-hmm. I be talking to dudes. Like we become friends and shit. Like and I appreciate it. You know why? Because like without without y'all that support me and come through, like it's like who am I? Mm-hmm. You know. So I be showing love. So if a guy is smart, the best way to get your attention, like I do beats, I do. Be- what do you think? The well, yeah, to, to definitely to get my attention, it'd be something about work first because anybody that knows me knows I'm passionate about my career. Y'all here, fellas, talk about so that work like, first, then later on. Right, you know, like let me see be, that you yeah. really invested in me. Okay, like, let me see you, you actually like you believe in me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because a, a lot of times people be in relationships and y'all don't even support each other. Y'all don't even believe in each other. Y'all be like trashing each other like nah this is supposed to be like we building together like i want to see you come up i want to see you win because if you winning i'm winning like we a team at the end of the day facts, you know facts. so um yeah that is a, that's a, a trick probably like to get in with me is like to work because i be i love to work okay okay and another thing i was on the ig getting my thirst on I seen you do a backflip and a split and some couple bounces. What's up with that? Period. What's up with that, girl? <laughs> I'm a bo- I could I could curse. Right? Did, did you re- like? Did you make? Did you like remix that song? Bouncy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It sounded like it was a little <laughs> skit. Though. I'm like, it sounded like I don't know. Well, I didn't. I I I got the idea, but I did my own take. Like I didn't do anything from her. Or get any ideas from her? It was just the beat. Of course not. That one. That was that why I mean. Yeah, yeah, the beat. Yeah. But. Yeah, so you I'm a boss, bitch. I do CrossFit on the dick. That, let's, let's hear some more on that. Now, don't be stopping now. Don't be dropping them bars and stopping like that. Now. Can we hear yeah. some more of that thing? That's uh, how, that's the that's the line on the song. That is. The let's line. hear some more. Goddamn, girl, we I'm excited. a boss, bitch. I do CrossFit on the dick. Oh. Couple outfits. I don't need them cause I'm rich. Oh. All these bands on me make a broke bitch sick. Oh. Get your mans off me. This a broke bitch dick. Oh, she going. <laughs> that's how you coming. That's how I'm coming. Straight guys. So so goddamn so goddamn so if a guy trying to holler they gotta be they gotta be bossed out then. Period. But you can know I what? T- can I take you to McDonald's on the first day? Goddamn. Or uh, I gotta take you Bonnie Hannas. I want to know. Uh, I'll skip the McDonald's. We could go like it, it don't gotta be expensive. I just don't eat fast food. Like I don't eat McDonald's. It ain't good. So we go to plant. Get, go get a plant burger then. We could go to fuck. Yeah, we go to Panera. I'll okay, be like, cool, Panera. 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 She, oh, she put me on mm-hmm. Panera. Okay, okay. Panera. Mm-hmm. Take me to go get some Haitian food. Take me to get some Cuban food. Like, mm. okay, what's your favorite Cuban food? Um, I always order the same thing. It's a bistec milanesa oh. with. Arroz blanco y maduro. Oh, you sound like you're making a commercial over there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, then. So I'm saying, though, um, so I'm saying, let us know what's next, though. Any photo shoot? How, how you prepare for a photo shoot? How long does it take? Hair, makeup? Um, I really take time into my shit. Like, I, I don't have no stylist. I, I am my own creative director um, with my videos. My boy, Kevin Hoodrich. Kevin, shout out to him. Um, you know, we come up with our own concepts, like, and I creative direct everything. So my outfits, my hairstyles, my looks, like, I basically tell my, you know, my makeup artist and I'll tell my hairstyles what I want to see and what I'm, like, going towards. Um, but if I'm getting ready for a shoot, no smoking, no drinking all day. Because on camera, you can see that shit. If you smoke, like, mm-hmm. your, your eyes be baggy. And it's cool for dudes, but for females, like, everything is real specific. You're nice. like, oh, why you look tired? Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I don't smoke. I don't drink. I will run. Um, if I don't if I don't run that morning, I ran the day before. So, like, my body is tight. And I don't. Um, I also fast. So on the day of a shoot, I won't eat anything. I only drink water. Oh. I don't want my stomach to be, like, any little pudgy or anything. I want a shit to look you want, like. You want that flat, flat. Mm-hmm. That's going down. And you mentioned that's the video man? Mm-hmm. Photographer man, too? Um, I mean, he'll take pictures, but I work with different photographers. You know, like, I don't have nobody specific. Um, and, and, you know, even videographers, I'll work with different people, but Kevin is my main man. Like, that's my dog. Can you explain how you did know? you meet Kevin? Then What's the name of the production? Um, Hoodridge Shot That Shit. Okay, then. Mm-hmm. But um, Kevin, Kevin reached out to me after my sisters had passed. He knew one of my sisters. And um, he reached out to me and was like, man, let's work. And I'm like, hell yeah, let's get it. And then, you know, the chemistry was good. He is a very, he's really good at what he does. And I'm super seasoned when it comes to videos i got uh, a trophy for music video i got 2015 
video video vixen of the year. What video they that gave was? me a they gave me a trophy and everything. I'd done so many music videos. You don't even know it. You just you got the award for being I got the award in the videos. No, I, yeah, I got an award because I was like known. Like I was in so many. I blessed so m- I blessed so many fucking cameras, man. But is that know. rumor? Is that's you twerking, dropping like it's hot in that Kodak video? No, so I I wasn't. That was one. I don't think I've ever. Um, hit the split in nobody's video like that. Like well, uh, when true. I tell you that fire came in me and I don't care no more, that's part of it. I'm like, man, I'll show out. I'll do whatever. Like y'all ain't gonna tell me nothing. So yeah, I was having a good time. What about the dropping like that? So how it was being over there? Like where y'all was at for people that don't know? Um, you know, we was on the block. We was over there in Golden Acres. That day I was shooting my video for Florida and then he shot the census video that same night. And, um, you know, they kind of called us to come through, and I came through, and, you know, I, we got footage from both. And shout out to Yak, man. He, he went on it. Yeah, damn. So you did, basically one. did two video shoots that day. Mm-hmm. And so, like, people, the, they they in the blogs, they're like, hmm, why is she wearing the same no, outfit? No, that's what they say. <laughs> like, that's why I sent to my No, guy. not her wearing the same outfit in both videos. Bitch, it was my video in yeah. the daytime, mm-hmm. and then we shot his at the nighttime. That's why I be bringing extra hoodies here. I'm like, boy, I don't want any three, four people. They like, why you got the same? Why you got the same outfit? Mm-hmm. Mind your business. Facts. Couple outfits. I don't need them because I'm rich. Ooh, bars. Where them bars coming from like that? That's on the Bossy song, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. So, do you mind spinning something for us or my dog scared? Who, me? Yeah, yeah. We know he's scared, but we don't know about oh, you. Nah. The stupid star. Can you spit something for us? Mm-hmm. A little freestyle or oh, something you wrote down so we could hear something. Cause you teased yeah. us with that that bossy now. You went in now, so we want you feel me? Um You ain't got to if you don't want to now. I ain't gonna put that pressure on you. I know I wanna think of something for you. I really could just spit off uh, the bossy track. Oh girl, you better you know go in on that thing. This one verse or something. Hit that dude. Private party, diamonds offset like I'm Cardi. Rolling joints, they think I'm Marley. I could buy you what you wanted. I get bitches hype, real life. Please don't get me started. I hop on the mic with a knife. I am not a target. Bands on me, I'm gifted. No, I'm hot, I'm lifted. This new wrist is exquisite. Don't compete with bitches. I've been in the field, get some fourth and inches. Don't tell me you real. I would know I sense it. Okay then. <laughs> so I'm saying, when you drive, you, you, you freestyle or you write? I write. I know. I was just that same thing to say that. Sure. But like, do you pra- like do you practice the song, like, or you go in the booth and practice the song? You know, how some people like know the song before they even go in the booth. That I like to do that. I like to practice before I go in the booth, just so that I'm like in pocket. But okay, little it sound like you do that. How you deliver just on point. Yeah. Some people be sound like they jerk like what? you know, still yeah, fumbling, yeah, yeah. fumbling like on the track. Be, it sound like you just in pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I'll, I'll practice, Come to pocket. <laughs> I'll practice a little like. bit before I get in the booth, but you know, even once you get on the booth, you want to hear yourself once or twice. Mm-hmm. It's a little different. So you even do that sometimes? I'm not gonna do it better than that. Let me Hell get, yeah! No, I'm a perfectionist. I'll be like, mm, the mothers be like trying to hurry up and get it out the way and go. No, you not me. Tr- I, I'll sit there. I'll be like, mm, that one. It, it didn't sound off. Remember, I'll be singing too. So if something sounds pitchy. You know, I'm not just in there like throwing some words out. It's like a whole tone. It's like, what do I want to sound? I got my harms that I'll add behind it. So yeah, it's a whole. When I go in the studio, I don't even have nobody in the booth with me. Mm-hmm. Like it's just me and the engineer. Like a lot of people, they be going to the studio and it's a party. They have everybody come through. They That's got alcohol. Much. They get drunk and all that shit. Don't even drop nothing. And it, and it's like y'all was in there for eight mm-hmm. hours and, and you only did two songs. Mm-hmm. Like what's the what's the point? Facts. You know, so I'd I be going in there like super focused. I'd be like, I don't want nobody in there. Me and my engineer go back and forth, you know, until I, I find, you know. And that one video, it sounded like Bossy playing and you got them cheeks clapping. One, two, one, mm-hmm. two. Is that for the same video? One, two, one, two. Is that for the same video right there? Yeah. So how it was working on that video? Let us know the setup and who put everything together. Because them cheeks moving to fit everything crazy. Let me know how that came together. Kevin, how that shit came together. Kevin, I ain't even got no. It was me. It was me. Nah. Um, Kevin. Oh, that me was and Kevin. Kevin. Okay. Then. Yeah, me and Kevin. I, You know, I told him I wanted to do this. I kind of told him, you know, the direction or whatever. Um, he found a location uh, that had all these different type of crazy ass rooms. And I'm like, perfect. That shit goes exactly for the vibe of the song. Um, 
and then I, I added like the ties. I had got ties matching, like I got one for Tafia because like with my outfit, if I threw the tie on, it kind of gave it the bossy, you know, to go co in hand. Um, and then I just, that's my style. Like I like my shit to be very different, real pop, you know? So it was kind of easy for me to um, see what looks I wanted to have. I kind of just went in my wardrobe, hit the mall one day and like found all the different looks that I thought would go good. Um, Shout out to the two models that came out to the video. You know, I put a post. I was like, I'm looking, you know, for some people to be in the video. I went through different girls. Um, you know, I had a, a, a nice, good-looking gentleman in there. Uh, so that's kind of how that went. And then with me, um, just doing like that, that's, I'll do that shit with my eyes closed. Me being on camera, like, it's easy mm -hmm. for me to just go into character. And, like, if I want to be sexy, I don't got to think about it. It's real easy for me to do. Facts, facts, facts. And since the corona, you know, been even though it's still around, I know they got clubs opening back up. How the performance? You been performing yet? Hitting that stage? Yes. Um. But again, like you said, like they just starting to open back up, and now I'm really trying to, you know, push everything that I got going on with this music I'm about to drop. I'm about, I got an album coming out, um, with like 17 songs, and then I'm shooting. Yeah. Why are you giving them so much? Let me because, know. Because so remember when I told you. Like, I, I didn't release some stuff when I first started because I'm listening to all these people. I, I don't care about what people say is how you do stuff now. Like, I just want to do it how I want to do it. Facts. And I don't want to sit on music. Like, so they're like, oh, no, don't do it like that. You got to wait. And then you end up sitting on some shit for two years. And now you got, like, all this other music. I could have, you could have been dropped that and kept dropping, kept yeah. dropping. You know, keep feeding them. That's the only way to really, like, be successful is to be consistent. Why they don't, why, why I, I like that. Why they don't do it like that? Why a lot of people get dropping songs, they just put it in the cut, like, they don't even never came out. Well, I feel like, wait, what you said? Let's say you drop a song, you like it, right? Yeah. But, yo, you know, the team might say, don't release it. Like you say, it's been two years, it still ain't never come out. Why we dropped right. it in the first place for them? Right. You feel me? Because I got a lot of friends like that. I'm like, damn, this ain't right. coming. I'm like, oh, yeah, we tripping then. It's like, you know what, why? Might we release it, then do, like you say, go to the next one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and they, the, the shit is only going to get better. You know Facts. what I'm saying? Like, people be holding on to things like, oh, this was my best this is my best record. It's like, yo, you, you like you. The more you keep working on your craft, you're only gonna get better, dog. Like, just keep, you know, releasing. And at the end of the day, like, are you really doing it? Like, what's the, your purpose of doing it? Do you really love the shit? You know what I'm saying? If you love it, man, drop the shit. It don't matter. That's my opinion. You know, for other people, it might be different, but that's how I feel. You got a single right now, buzzing right now. I can't, I, I can't remember on. You feel me? Who's on it? But it's buzzing right now. How did that come together? Um, so. Uh, my homie that was in the feds, um, he was talking to me about this artist, and um, he, I guess the artist was in prison for, you know, seven years or something like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, a lot of people in there, like, they kind of knew about him, and he was, you know, telling me to do a record. I'm like, bro, I don't I don't know who that is. Like, mm -hmm. so he, he was like, Manson, um, he made it happen. You know, he made it happen, and um, I'm glad he did because Tafia is a super talented artist, and he, he slid on the track. Okay, so. then. Mm -hmm. So who else you ain't work with you want to work with in the future? Uh, There's so many good artists I want to work with. Who you got in the clutch? Y'all about to have something coming through we could talk about. Oh, well, shit. I just did a feature with uh, Lil Jerry. He a young Chico out of Hialeah, and... Um, my boy Johnny Oz out here. Like I, I got a couple of records with people. In the people. clutch. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, YFM Ray out of Atlanta. Like it's, I got some shit in there, and um, I'm just excited to like, you know, release. Okay, then. So let's say they want to book you. Let them know the booking details. Of how you feel me? How they want to book? So, here. like I said, if you already follow me, thank you, love you. If you not follow me, please do at Jasmine K. David at J A S M I N C A D A V I D. If you would like to reach me, you can email me Jasmine K. David at gmail dot com. Check out the site www.thejazzycbd.com you can get all your wholesale CBD Delta A CBG needs delivered straight to your house or your business, and um bossy is out on all platforms i got the video out right now it's me featuring tafia got my album coming out next month in october my song trials uh which is a tribute to my sisters 
Um, that's going to be dropping in October for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And, um, you know, thank you. <laughs> you already know. Now you have it now. We done brought it. Let them know I'm the name one more time. See, girl, Jasmine Kadavid. Okay, then. That's my name. Don't wear it out. Okay, then. <laughs> Tippy Toe Podcast Show, you know. We appreciate Jasmine for coming through. I'm on it right now. Rolex in the cut. Oh, no. Somebody asked, told me to ask you one thing, though. They yeah. take you to the club. What's your favorite drink in the club? Before you go, Jasmine, we got to know. In the club? In the club. Like, we book you. What what, what that drink she got to have? What bottle she got to have? Um, I like champagne, but I like Tito's. I fuck with Tito's, man. It's, it's, it's a little unorthodox, but I fuck with Tito's. Like, I don't be getting too drunk. Like, I be feeling good. Okay, then. Y'all hear it now. Them Tito's now. They're going to get her right. Hey, they better ambassador me. Straight up, straight up. Yeah, you <laughs> and let them know the rap one more time before we get out of here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need me a pint too now, girl. Uh, Jazzy Rolling Papers? Yeah, I'm going to need one. Let me get nah, one. No, this is for you. Oh, the whole thing? Yeah, the whole oh, thing. Oh, we going to smoke good. Mm-hmm. Okay, for everybody then. that comes through how can you Jazzy get Rolling one? How Papers, can you, no. you can get um, wholesale again from the site, the jazzycbd.com. I sell wholesale everything, the Rolling Papers, Pink, Unbleached, Ultra Thin, uh, all of your CBD needs, flour, tinctures, Edibles, CBG, and Delta 8. Okay, then. I'm about to be checking that website out. Y'all already know what it is. Tip it Toe Podcast the next time. And you know what it is. They've been brought to you by Go Money Grill. Put your money where your mind feel. Get your little six on six, eight on ten. They're going to get you right, dog. You know what it is.